I'm Phil Groff, the Executive Director of the Royal Astronomical Society of Canada. One of our society's primary goals is to protect our night sky from light pollution. What do we mean by light pollution? Well, at night, light from artificial lighting on Earth is bounced back to us by the atmosphere. Light shining up and bouncing back from artificial lights like street lamps, billboards, outdoor arenas and ski hills is often brighter than the stars themselves. That's why you can't see many stars in a city. A study published in Science Advances reveals that over 80% of the world's population lives in areas affected by light pollution. And for the US and Europe, that number is nearly 99%. About one third of the world cannot see the Milky Way galaxy, our home in the universe. Why do we need dark skies? Well, humans have evolved over the years to live with light during the day and dark at night. Experiencing light at times when our body expects darkness can upset our daily sleep cycles and prevent us from getting proper rest. It disrupts our daily circadian rhythms. Disrupting those circadian rhythms can change many other aspects of our biology that help keep us healthy as well including hormone release, eating habits, and body temperature. That's why sometimes you sleep better when you go camping. The secluded nature of many parks allows you to experience true darkness. And it's not just humans who rely on dark skies. Birds, turtles, seals, and many other animals use the night sky and stars to navigate. Dark skies also help us connect to something bigger than ourselves. The first time you visit a, a truly dark site, and see all the stars you normally can't see at home. Perhaps the Milky Way, perhaps some deep sky objects, and you realize the light from those stars often left thousands of years ago, that you're truly looking into the past of the universe, you start to experience the awe and wonder that has always drawn astronomers to contemplate ourselves and our place in the cosmos. So how can you tell how light polluted your skies are? The Bortle scale is used by astronomers to quantify how dark the sky is. Bortle 9 is the most light polluted sky possible. Think of trying to see the stars from the Las Vegas Strip or the streets of downtown Toronto. You can only see the moon, maybe some of the planets and the brightest stars. As we turn down the light pollution, you can begin to see more and more stars, constellations, the Milky Way and even deep sky objects like the Andromeda Galaxy. Bortle 1 or 2 skies are the kind of skies you can see at dark sky locations. Using this Globe at Night website and the method on it, you can become a citizen scientist. Based on how many stars you can see in Orion or another seasonal constellation, you can estimate how light polluted your skies are. The data you collect is used to see how light pollution has changed over time. So you want to get out and see the Milky Way, right? You can use this website to find somewhere with dark skies near you. You can see where the biggest sources of light pollution are. If you're in a big city like Toronto and aren't able to leave, try heading somewhere like Cherry Beach or the shores of Lake Ontario. That way, facing south, you'll be looking away from all the light pollution from the city. And of course, we recommend visiting one of the Royal Astronomical Society of Canada's dark sky preserves. These sites have made changes to their lighting in order to protect your view of the night sky. Visit rask.ca or skynews.ca for a full list of dark sky sites and to learn more about how you can help preserve our night sky.